Chris here. We're going to put on a, a new Humminbird Mega Live. I wanted to run through what comes in the box. I'm going to film the installation process and kind of just show you how how it goes in and gets gets mounted and kind of a little review on, on how to go through the setup. So just uh, follow along with us and, and hang tight. All right, so you got basically two, three connections here. So there's been some questions I've seen online about what this is. This is a noise filter. It cuts down on interference problems that you get from your trolling motor batteries feeding through your charger to, to your 12 volt system. So we're gonna put them, this guy in line uh, from your battery charger 12 volt side to the battery itself. And that'll eliminate the feedback from your trolling motor 36 volt, 24 volt feeding through. Power cable, that's a good size power cable too. Uh, this is much bigger than the other two brands on the market it looks like, um, at least it's thicker. So we'll run him, him into the power uh, distribution box that we've already installed on this boat. Then you have your transducer. So unlike the two other competitors, there's no external box uh, for this system to work. He will plug directly into the five port ethernet box, or if you're running just a single graph, you could plug him into the back of the graph directly. So we're gonna, we're gonna work through here. We'll get him mounted up on the trolling motor, get the wires ran. The other cool thing that I like that Humminbird has done is they have put these in. So this allows you to zip tie it to the trolling motor without it hurting the cables. So pretty cool addition for Humminbird. Good job, guys. You have a little tab lock here and a tab lock here. It gives it direction and lines everything up. That tab lines up there to there to get the right fit. They come together quite nicely. And then it'll still allow you to turn. little tips that I learned when installing live scopes is you have these four bolts here so you you want to try to tighten all four bolts up together and not one you know all the way up and one all the way up because each time you tighten it this transducer rotates so you want to run them up together where it still keeps it parallel with the side of your trolling motor that's very solid kind of hard to see over here so we'll show you right here you have an F for forward facing view right here. If you want it to go down, you line the D up right here to forward facing. And then push both tabs in and kick it up. And now you have your front view. Next thing we're gonna do is, is run our run our wiring and zip tie it up to the shaft. Run all your zip ties in the same direction as far as how you face them, face them coming in. It's one of those little detail things. You want them all at the same height across the board. The cable is routed underneath this on the old Crex. Um, we see a lot of them this way. The problem is when you pull up, it pulls right into all of that there. So what I like to do is route I'll show you this here over that there. So now you're not worried about getting it caught up in the cable pulling on it and damaging it. So now your cable is free and clear. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and hook in the, the network cable extension in here. We're gonna go ahead and hook up our power cable. Um, I do like to unwrap the network cables, drag them out, get them straight, get the, the coil out of them. Same way with power cables to get that coil out. I do highly recommend always having a trolling motor sleeve cover of some sort. What will happen is the cable will get pinched right here when the trolling motor comes down. I've seen that happen quite a bit. For, for rigging boats, this is uh, probably one of the best tools that uh, a, a guy could have. This is what, what I use for pulling cables through boat channels and makes it really easy to, to get in tight spots and pull and it's pretty flexible. So we're gonna use this to pull with. Uh, 
advantages of being a smaller guy. So this is the power wire for the live. So it has a shielded wire that's made into the harness. Um, so being that I shortened this harness a little bit, we're going to take that shield, we're going to put it onto the ground and make that all one wire. As some would say, this is satisfying. Everything that I do wiring wise, I use heat shrink connectors. It's a must. This fuse panel is also one of the things I added in on this boat here. Uh, so we've got 10 gauge running up to it on its own source and of course splitting out to, to provide power to the graphs up front and to the Mega Live. Um, so pretty good addition as well. All right, so basically we've got these two graphs set up. We went with the, the mapping and down imaging and mapping in 2D on the, on the, the Helix 9 up front. And then we've got the Solix 10 running the Mega Live with mapping as well. So I've set these up this way. It all work uh, pretty efficiently for you. Waypoints all, all share, everything's networked together. There's four of them that are networked through a five port box. Overall, it was a great install. Once your boat rigged right, it's as important that you take it to someone who knows how to rig and work with electronics and wiring. Um, I found a few things on this boat that were not correct as far as not sheathed wiring, uh, wrong size wiring, uh, but we got all that fixed and taken care of. Uh, my name is Aaron with Texas Boat Works. Uh, we're a Bass Cat Blazer Crestliner dealer. Uh, in addition to we can rig anything you want to. Uh, we're Mercury authorized and uh, looking to, to be Yamaha authorized as well soon. So you guys have a good weekend and thank you.